and welcome to Bite Size Daily. My seven to nine year old mates, get ready because we're going on an exciting, amazing learning adventure together. Who's with me? Come on, say it louder. Who's with me? I can't do this alone. That's what I'm talking about. Here's what's coming your way today. Listen up, gang, we've got super movers, followed by maths fun, and we're throwing a decimal party with Miss Webb. My friend O.T. will be reading another brilliant poem from our book of the week, Please Mrs. Butler, in the book club. We're back in the party spirit, creating musical mashups, and we're finishing off with our favourite game, There's Something on Your Head! Ready? Let's get started. Whoa, whoa, eh? I mean, not that cool, is it? Uh, but someone who is cool is my good friend Naomi Wilkinson, and she's got a super movies routine to get you all in the learning mood. Yes, that means you too, grown up. So stretch out, make some space. Let's give this another go, shall we? Woo. Woo. Hey, that's better. Decimal beat. Hit it. Everyone knows about whole numbers. Like one, two, and three, you know what I mean. But decimals and fractions, well, they're different. They're the numbers that happen in between. You know about fractions, halves, and quarters. And splitting a number into tenths. Decimals are a different way of doing this. And fractions have decimal equivalents. Helps determine the value of a digit. It extends place value. Can you dig it? To write one tenth as a decimal, we write down naught point one. Two tenths is naught point two. Three tenths naught point three, and so on. What is the job of the decimal point? It separates ones from the tenths. If you didn't have it there to help you understand, the number just wouldn't make sense. Helps determine the value of a digit. It extends place value. Can you dig it? What about the equivalent of a quarter? But why? 25 is a quarter of a hundred. Two tenths, but what's that extra five? It's the hundredths column, another place value. And it sits comfortably next to the tenths. It works just the same with money too. Except we call it pounds and pence. Helps determine the value of a digit. It extends place value. Can you dig it? So now we know each decimal has an equivalent fraction. You ready to shout out what you know? Time for some decimal action. Seven tenths. 0.7. Three tenths. 0.3. Five tenths. 0.5. Half to you and me. Three quarters. 0.75. Right, everyone, I hope you've all woken up and feeling funky fresh and ready for some learning fun. I know I am. Uh, let's lesson up and dive straight into our first subject. I'm joined by the lovely Miss Webb. Hello, what are we learning today? So today we're learning about decimals. Oh, well, let's get to the point then. <laughs> Do you get it? Point because the decimal. Perhaps you should just stick to presenting, Karim. But I think you're going to really enjoy this one because it involves one of your favourite things. <gasps> Oh, uh, dancing. No. Oh, dogs. No. Oh, pizza. Yes. <gasps> We're going to have a pizza party. I love pizza and parties. Amazing. But first, let's take a look at what you want to know about decimals. Here's what you want to know about decimals and fractions. 
Joe has two pizzas. He cuts each pizza into ten slices. Each slice of pizza is one-tenth. We can also write it like this. This is a decimal. A decimal is a way of writing a number that is not whole. Joe has 20 slices. So that is 20 tenths. That's two whole pizzas. Joe eats three slices. How many pizzas does he have left? You got it. 1.7 pizzas. 1.7 means one whole pizza and seven tenths. Ah, that's right, your favourite maths ninja is back. Sincere. And ready to have a pizza party. Miss Webb, do you know why pizza is a ninja's favourite food? Why? Because it comes as a slice. What? Ah! Well, then we better make sure there is enough to go around. OK, now, I know this section is about decimals, but how does pizza come into it? Well, so far, we have looked at whole numbers. Sometimes we need to break it down smaller. If you are taking a bit of something away, not the whole, decimals are what we use to represent this. Use pizza as an example. If you have one whole pizza with ten slices and eat two slices, you can talk about how much is left with decimals, not just whole numbers. If a whole pizza is one and you eat two slices, that's 0.2 of the whole pizza, leaving you with 0.8 of the whole pizza left. We call the number after the decimal point tenths. The numbers get smaller the further they are from the decimal point. Ten tenths add up to one whole. OK. OK, I think I understand the theory. Shall we put it into practice? Sure. Let's do it. Oh, and welcome to my ninja pizza party! OK. If ten ninjas are coming to the party, how much pizza does each ninja get? Oh, well, if there's ten ninjas, then we'd all get one slice, which is 0.1. Yeah, OK. I don't want my slice, and I give it to you, Karim. How many will you now have? That's so sweet. Well, if I had one before, and I have two now, that means 0.2. Great. OK, if you get really hungry before the party starts and eat three pizza slices, how much is left for the rest of the ninjas? Well, Miss Webb, that is very likely indeed. If I eat one pizza slice, two pizza slices, three pizza slices, that leaves seven slices, which is 0.7. Great. Why don't you try setting up your own cardboard pizza restaurant for those hungry ninjas in your family and test out your decimal skills? Yeah, it's super fun. Great idea, Miss Webb. All this pizza talk has made me a little bit peckish, so I'm off to have a snack. And if you want to keep testing those decimal skills, then head to the BBC Bite Size website, where there's loads of Tasty Maths contents waiting for you, just like this. When we use decimals, you can think of one whole divided into ten parts. They're tenths. Or if you divide into one hundred parts, these are hundredths. So, how do we write them? <coughs> Say hello to the decimal point. We place digits to the left or right of the decimal point, depending on their value. On the left are our tens and ones, and on the right are our tenths. Here she is. Ah, oh, isn't she sweet? When the tenths get up to nine, we need the ones. Now, what about the hundredths? Ah, isn't he cute? So, now we've got the tens and ones on one side of the decimal point and the little tenths and hundredths on the other. Ah, one big happy family. It's time for my favourite part of the show. Club. This week's book is called Please Mrs Butler by Alan Alberg. It's a book of poems all about school life, and I know you guys are missing school. Come on, I know you are, really. Uh, Oti Mabuse is back to read for us again, and today's poem is called Scissors. Here it is. Enjoy. Nobody leave the room. Everyone listen to me. We had seven pairs of scissors at half past two, and now there are only three. Seven pairs of scissors disappeared from sight. Not one of you leaves till we find them. We can stop here all night. Scissors don't leave themselves, melt away, 
or explode, scissors have not got legs of their own to go running off up the road. We really need those scissors. That's what makes me mad. If it was seven pairs of children we'd lost, it wouldn't be so bad. I don't want to hear excuses. Don't anybody speak. Just run out this room till we find them or we'll stop here all week. A massive thank you to OT for reading today's poem, Scissors. If you've missed any of the book clubs so far, don't you worry. You can catch up on the BBC iPlayer. Download BBC iPlayer app for free. How cool is that? Now, Miss Webb, does this poem make you think about what you were like at school? Yeah, it does. I really enjoyed school, so I know lots of you will be missing your friends and teachers. OK, let's talk about the book. What do you think happened to the scissors? What is the most likely explanation? Where would you look for the scissors? And what else could go missing in the classroom? I used to lose things all the time. It was a nightmare. Uh, what do you think could have happened to the scissors yourself? Well, in the third verse, the teacher says scissors don't lose themselves, melt away or explode. She also says that scissors have not got legs to run. If scissors could run, where do you think they would go? Karim, if you were a pair of scissors, show us how you would run. Oh, OK, well, they're very straight, aren't they? So I can't bend my legs. I'd... And now dance. Oh, OK. <laughs> I thought that was pretty graceful. Thanks, Miss Webb, for that. <laughs> Why didn't you have a go writing your own poem? It could be about funny things you do with your teachers, like in Please, Mrs Butler, or creative things you're doing at home at the moment. Whatever topic you choose, remember that poetry is made to be performed. So grab your siblings, your grown-ups and your teddy and read your creation out loud to all. Yes, indeed. And get your grown-ups to send us a message on Twitter or Facebook with how you get on. We'd love to see those. Uh, Oti Mabuse is reading another poem from Please Mrs Butler tomorrow, so make sure you don't miss it. We've talked about school so much that we've magically summoned a head teacher, and I hope I'm not in any trouble. It's Mr. McPartlin. Hello, Corinne. Thank you very much. Always nice to be here. It's so lovely to see you. So, Mr. McPartlin, let's talk about music. Okay, so you're a head teacher, and you are also on Britain's Got Talent with your school choir. That's pretty cool. Uh, is your school full of musical stars then? Totally honestly, no. You don't actually have to be great. You just have to be enthusiastic because that's what great music is all about. I'm excited to learn from the best. Now, Mr McPartlin, you might know I do love my dancing, so I know a little bit about our next topic, music and rhythm. Karim, what's your rhythm actually like? Could you show me the cha-cha? Yeah, OK, I'll show you the lockstep moves. So it goes cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha. <laughs> cha, cha, cha. Nice. Cha, Could you do cha, that more slowly? Yeah, of course. cha and now faster. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha, cha. Cha, cha, cha. Fantastic. Cha. Absolutely brilliant. I want to talk about emotion and rhythm in music. The rhythm of a song can tell us something about the emotion that's behind it. Sad songs often have a slow rhythm and a happy song will often have a fast rhythm called an upbeat rhythm. We can test this out through my song mashup challenge. I want to put you to the test, and I'm going to give you a fast song, but you have to perform it to the rhythm of a slow song and see how it changes the emotion of the song. OK. Let's try Little Mix's Black Magic mashed up with Louis Capaldi's Someone You Loved. An obvious remix, I think. <clears throat> oh, that's hard. Take a sip of my secret potion I'll make you fall in love Wow. That was that actually was quite beautiful. thing of beauty. How do you think that <laughs> I changed... I myself there, Mr McPartlin. How do you think that changed the emotion of the song? Well, it did make me feel a little bit teary and sad, actually. But it's amazing how changing the rhythm from a song can affect the feeling of it, too. <laughs> that was genuinely so much fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that, too. Rhythm is so important, and it's great to learn about the emotion behind different rhythms. Why don't you have a go at making your own musical mashups at home? Get the family involved, have a song battle, and see who can come up with the best mashup combo. And you can find more mega musical ideas on the Bite Size website. Check this out.
Here it is. Our fresh new practice room. Fresh. It's about as fresh as a zombie's flip-flop. So this is where the magic will happen. <laughs> Looks like a witch has already been here. Ah! Can I start hitting things yet? <sighs> Mr Piper believes we can make the best end-of-year song ever. And we're going to make it happen. Right, guys? Yeah! yeah! Ruby? Well, we don't have any clue about rhythm, melody or a chorus, but, hey, what can go wrong? Exactly! Let's do it! A one, two, three, four! Wow, that's quite the sound you're making! Your ideas are great, but let's see if we can play together. Let's start with a pulse. I should have brought my shades. Where are our instruments? You don't always need instruments to make music. Just ourselves. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two... Three, four. Now we have a pulse. The notes are all the same length. Like your heartbeat. Exactly. Now we have a steady pulse, we can make a rhythm. A rhythm is a pattern of sounds of different lengths. A pattern of sounds of different lengths. So we can use words to make a rhythm. Let me try. Is this right? Is this right? There's no right or wrong, only rhythm. Everyone! Weirdest day of my life. Chicken and chips and mushy peas. This is stupid, this is stupid. Uh, nice one, Ruby. It's nearly time to wrap up today's learning fun. But before we do, you know what it's time for? Yep, that's right. Join in with me, Mr McPartland. It's time for... There's, There's a, a thing on your head! head. Play along at home, too, with grown-up siblings. Whoever lives with you, get involved. Don't be shy. Uh, we're going to test what we've remembered from today's 7 to 9's learning fun. All you need is a pen and a sticky note. It's as easy as that. I've written something on this note from our music lesson earlier. Uh, Mr. McPartland, place the note on your head, please. No peeking. You have 30 seconds to ask yes or no questions and guess what it is. OK, let's get 30 seconds on the clock, please. And in three, two... One, let's play! Is it a song? No. Is it an artist? No. Is it a solo? No. Group? Yes. Male? No. Female? Uh, yes. Women? Yes. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Little mix! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Shout out, one word's there. On. Not even asking questions, love that. Well done and commiserations if you didn't get it right, but you know what, it doesn't matter, it's just a bit of fun. Uh, you were the band Little Mix, although I must say, your hairstyle isn't quite making the cut like their hairdos. Do you get it? The cut. Get it? Well done, gang. I hope you all enjoyed today's very lively lessons from musical mashups to a ninja pizza party. And if you want more, the Bite Size website is ready and waiting for you. I'll be back tomorrow with more fun than a month of fun days. Goodbye.